today's webinar, which is part of a series called ROI from a Zero Listen podcast. Now, this is one of three episodes. This is the third, actually. And the previous episodes covered content output ROI. That was the first one. And the second one was website traffic ROI. So we have those two uh, webinars. They are online. We'll drop a link into the chat so that you have those as well. So those are the previous two. But today is a bit different. Today is about influencing pipeline through podcasting. It is part three of the Zero Listen podcast uh, series. So first, before we get into talking about how you can influence your pipeline through podcasting, let's first define what is a zero listen podcast. Now that may seem kind of strange to you when you think, well, why would there be a zero listen podcast? Well, that isn't the goal, but especially for businesses and B2B, the listenership isn't uh, the big as maybe the famous ones. You're not trying to be Joe Rogan. You're not trying to be NPR. You're trying to talk to the right people in your audience. And that isn't to be celebrity, it's to be effective for your business. And as we're going to, going to discuss today, is to drive some pipeline for your business as well. So the Zero Listen podcast is a strategic tool used by companies to create valuable content and establish new connections, measuring success by business impact rather than by the show's listenership. Business impact. We're marketers. And we're going to be asked, how does this marketing effort affect our business. So business impact is what we're looking to to accomplish here today. So a business podcast is a bit different from your entertainment related podcast because you have a different purpose. It may be brand awareness, it may be building authority, thought leadership, uh, boosting content output, as we mentioned in the previous uh, episodes, and lead generation. That's a major one. And that's one of the main components of leading to pipeline influence and influencing deals. These are the things we're going to be focusing on mostly today. And we'll tap a bit on the other items as well, because they're all intertwined into how your podcast can lead to uh, pipeline influence. Now, also with the business podcast, some differences are also the format. It'll be more structured. Uh, it'll be semi-scripted, and it's important to say semi because you don't want to script your podcast. You want to have a conversation, and that conversational tone can be professional. It can even go into technical uh, industry jargon, uh, but you're, you're going to have your conversation tone towards a target you're speaking to. And that audience can be potential customers, industry peers, or even employees. So again, a business podcast has different purpose, format, tone, and target audience than you would for an entertainment podcast. If you want to look at those differences deeper, look at the previous two um, episodes. And you'll see we went further into those on the other episodes. So from a business podcast, there are also some additional wins when you're doing business podcasting. And that is you can create uh, more account-based content. You can actually create a podcast specifically to target uh, a larger account you want to talk to to answer their question and questions and to sp speak specifically to that account. Also, building relationships with industry leaders, as well as connecting with your existing customers for future deals. And most importantly, as we're going to talk about today, is building pipeline. So how do we go about building pipeline with your podcast? Well, your podcast is a content creation engine. And so when we look at the traditional funnel for a podcast, uh, for your business rather, you have your traditional marketing uh, and sales funnel, which goes from awareness to interest to consideration and to action. And of course, a lot of us, you know, in, in the industry, we debate whether the funnel actually exists because we know people come and go in and out of the sides of the funnel. It isn't always a direct line through, but the, the basic tenets still exist of great gaining awareness and interest and consideration in order to get that customer to build uh, loyalty with you as a customer. So when you're creating this podcast, there's certain content that can be derived from your podcast that can influence your pipeline. Starting with, if you're creating video from your podcast, that can feed into the awareness stage of the funnel. Then also your social media, you're going to be creating video and audio clips and also written content from your podcast that feed into this awareness stage of the funnel. Now, the podcast itself 
can build additional interest in your brand. Once they understand you have valuable information to share, then the podcast itself on top of all the additional content will also feed into uh, the interest level you have with your customers. Now, that podcast itself also feeds into other types of content, such as newsletters, case studies. Having a conversation with a client in a podcast is within itself a case study. You're discussing what your relationship was with the client, what you solved for that client. That in itself is a case study that is real-time, conversational, and has a lot more authenticity than, say, a written case study that just has a bunch of statistics thrown at your reader without having the conversation and questions around that case. So also, when you're having these conversations, you're going to answer frequently asked questions. In fact, when you conduct an interview in a podcast, you should ask of your guests those frequently asked questions because your listeners will want to know those answers as well. Now, your landing pages um, with strong CTAs, when you have your landing page, you can also include clips from your podcast, include information you got from those thought leaders, as well as customer testimonials by having a customer on your podcast. That in itself is a testimonial. You can ask them questions and imagine your viewers watching this podcast episode, hearing from your client. It isn't packaged as a testimonial, but it is a conversation with the client that otherwise would not have been seen or had a conversation with you if they weren't happy. So there's that customer testimonial that can help uh, in the stage of getting your potential customers to take action. Speaking of action, we have a guide that I want to share with you because teaching you all these things don't mean anything unless you can actually act on them. So this guide, before we published it, we renamed it to the actionable guide because every step in this has a link to how you can actually take action uh, in creating more content, scaling your content generation, and making sure that you're able to uh, drive pipeline and drive interest to your website and to your additional content with the marketing efforts you take. So you can either scan the QR code here. Uh, the link we'll put in the chat for you as well, so you can check out the chat. In fact, let me refresh the chat real quick to see what's going on there. Um, and so grab that guide because that guide will step you through the steps and also give you uh, specific uh, actions you can take along the way. Okay. So let's continue here. So opportunities for pipeline influence. Now there's a lots of things that will come out of your podcast and from that podcast. Uh, in fact, I want to make sure I mentioned too, if you're in the, in the LinkedIn live, you may want to refresh to make sure your content, your um, comments are refreshed and also those links that we just mentioned as well. Uh, you may have to refresh to see those links. So opportunities. Now there's lots of ways to promote your podcast. And some of them specifically feed into helping you uh, grow your pipeline. So the five main areas here are having your prospects as guests. As we mentioned earlier, those prospects or those customers can serve as testimonials. Uh, email promotion, website journey, and repurposing plus social media. Now we went deeper into the website journey on the previous episodes, but there's a key part here we want to discuss to make sure within that website journey that you do in order to drive pipeline. It isn't about driving mass listenership. It's about getting them to your website, getting them to identify themselves. So in doing that, let's look at your website journey. Keep your end game in mind. And that end game is to get them to your site and to identify themselves. So Every piece of content you create, whether it's a social post, whether it's an email link, whether it's the website, the, the podcast player itself, all of those things should have links that lead back to your website. It can lead back to specifically an episode page for that particular episode. And then that would lead to a, a page that has all your episodes on it. But the key point here in having this what we call a pod roll or list of all your episodes is that once you get them to your website, you want to get them to a form. Now, believe me, believe it or not, this is very effective. In fact, we get lots of leads this way as well because they listen to the podcast and as they get to our website, we always make sure there's a form there that says either 
learn more about this topic that we discussed. It could be subscribed to our newsletter. It could be an offer for a new uh, product, offering, announcement. Whatever it is that you do to offer to your customers, make sure you have this offer uh, or a form on the page where your podcast is listened to on your website. For this reason, you don't want to send your listeners out to Apple or out to Spotify. They need to come to your website so you can get them to this form and convert. Again, we're talking about building pipeline. We have to know who these people are. And so some of this content that you're going to be using, uh, of course, you want to repurpose that content. And so now you have your video highlights, your YouTube links, your LinkedIn uh, posts, all feeding back to your website. You can create micro content for LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter and as well as micro content from your audio. All of this information should be serving to educate your prospects, to drive to landing pages. You want to feature your customers as experts and answer questions. All of these things will help drive them to your website and then ultimately to your form. Now you may ask, how do we get all these pieces from an audio or video podcast? Let me give you some ideas on how you can do that because, again, your goal is not more listeners is to get to your listeners, to get to your customers. And so we're going to briefly jump into how to repurpose your content because that is the, the top of the funnel to feed all this content to your content machine to get them down the funnel we mentioned earlier to get them to be customers. So let's briefly go through this and uh, you'll see more about it in that guide that we mentioned earlier and also we went deeper into this in the previous episodes as well. But for your audio podcast, you have your audio embed that you will feed through your traditional uh, outlets through Apple and Spotify onto your website landing pages, your owned newsletter. And from that, with those audio clips and your social copy, you want to be able to make a guest pack. Now, we went into that earlier, but a guest pack is basically when you take all the content you created, whether it be audiograms, videograms, social snippets, text, graphics, you want to give that to your podcast guest because then they can use that to um, promote your podcast episode as well and everybody loves free content so if you give your guests a free video clip of them uh, speaking their expertise of course they're going to want to promote that clip that you provided for them so get that guest pack and also social post to one two three four different locations or more whatever your uh, social reach is and also a social newsletter. That social newsletter is not just your owned, but maybe it's your LinkedIn newsletter or your Medium newsletter. Now, all that should go to your landing page. You can also make a highlight article on a specific topic out of that podcast. But that all needs to go back to your website. We're trying to get that conversion to help drive your pipeline. Now, for video, very similar, except now you have even more content. You have video uh, in addition to your audio. And that video can feed into highlight videos. The full video can be on YouTube as well as short 30, 60 second clips for YouTube shorts, TikTok, and Instagram. And of course, those also go into your guest pack. They go into your social posts. They go into your social newsletter. You can create highlights. And again, back to your landing page. We're driving pipelines. So we don't want to drive traffic away to YouTube or to Spotify or to Apple. We want to drive traffic back to our website so we can convert them and drive pipeline. Now on our earlier, uh, the website ROI, we talked about driving traffic to your website. And that's another point of you know, a, need, a, a key uh, performance indicator. Are we driving more traffic to our website? Are we creating more content? That was the previous two uh, episodes. Are we driving more content? Are we driving more website traffic? And now we want to focus on driving more pipeline by getting them to our website. So I want to back up a moment and kind of give you a high level of this because, again, we're talking about, we're talking about creating content from a podcast. And, you know, if you're in the B2C world, it may be a bit more interesting to get uh, celebrity status. But if you're in a B2B world, you want to get traffic to your website, drive business, improve your ROI as a marketer. So here's a statement I want to make to you. The people consuming this content may never listen to your podcast. And that's okay. It does not matter because listenership isn't your goal. Business is. 
Our goal is to have business happen. And podcasting can create a massive amount of attention, not only for uh, us creating more content from the podcast, but driving website to website traffic, as well as getting that attention and learning who the people are who are consuming our content. And that's where the conversion part happens. Now, when it comes to measuring this, there's lots of metrics out there. Some matter and some don't, especially if you're doing a podcast for your business. So let's talk a bit about that. There are some hard metrics that are popular when it comes to measuring podcasts. Now, they're popular, but they're not so good for measuring a business podcast. And these metrics are found on your podcast host platform and individual podcast aggregates like Apple and Spotify. You'll see things like unique downloads, subscribers, which, by the way, is a horrible metric, uh, engagement through episode, uh, throughout the episode, and listenership. Now, these are only useful if your podcast is your business, if you're selling ads, or if you sell from the podcast. Now, if you're selling ads, of course, those who are advertising want to know what your downloads are, who your subscribers are. For what, whether they're, they're good or not, that's another story, but those are statistics that people will ask you for. And so those metrics work if you're out to have a celebrity podcast and you're selling ads. However, there are some soft metrics that are more important. And the most important ones in this case don't come from, from those places. They come from your website analytics. They come from your marketing automation platform and your CRM. And these are those items. Brand awareness authority, engagement with your website and your business, increased content output. Are you creating more content now, more quality content, not just any content, but more quality content because of your podcast? And are you generating leads? This is a, a very high value metric. It's hard to attribute admittedly, but it's a very high one. And so your podcast is a multi-touch machine. We mentioned that earlier. Your podcast can generate more quality content that will allow you to have touches through video, through audio, through website content. It helps you to stay top of mind during the sales process. And you want to be able to educate your, 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 your customers before your competitor does. So by having more content that brings you more attention, it gets you more activity within your timeline. This is very important. These metrics are very important. And so Let's talk about more in the language of your sales team, because they're going to want to know, you know, how does this affect me? What's in it for me? Why should you have a podcast? Why should I participate in your podcast? So let's look at the elements of a podcast in the customer journey from the podcast and through the pipeline. So first, we mentioned earlier the awareness phase. You now have audio, you have video from your podcast, you have social content from your podcast, you have conversations with customers or industry leaders. All of those help build awareness. Now it's time to take action. Then you have landing pages now with content from your podcast. You can send them offers. You have links to your product you may mention in your podcast to send them to landing pages. And then the goal is to identify, uh, you know, the term conversion means different for sales and marketing, but in the marketing standpoint, it means taking someone from being unknown, like an unknown listener to a known listener. So that's why you want to have your subscription forms, your newsletter forms, your contact us forms, any form to allow you to identify who your listeners are. And next, once you know who they are, you want to nurture them. You want to add them to the funnel. You want to uh, continue that relationship with them and send them con uh, additional relevant content based on what episode they listened to, perhaps uh, where they filled a format, what form they filled out. And now once you have them in your funnel and you're nurturing them, now you can definitely talk to your sales team because now you can work on, you know, evaluating what their needs are, helping them make a decision and then driving them to a purchase. That is your goal to take that lead across the marketing funnel and down the sales funnel into a purchase. Now, measurement, that's a part where we know in podcasting, measurement is difficult to do, especially when we get down to the part where we're looking at the influence on pipelines. So first, let's talk about why are we going to measure it? It's pretty obvious that we content marketing is a long game. It isn't advertising. You won't see the results today. It's a long game. So tracking will help you demonstrate the podcast influence on business development. 
So what do you want to measure? You want to measure the number of new high-level connections made. In other words, you're going to meet people as guests. Uh, you're going to have form fills from your podcast. You're going to have networking that happens uh, through your podcast, whether it's your guest, your internal experts, your competitor uh, experts, your competitors, competitors, um, uh, employee, not your competitors, uh, customers, even <laughs> some there, your competitors, customers can be a target as guests on your podcast. And you can measure that we have spoken to our competitors, guests and start that relationship. Are you getting more meetings because of your podcast in your meetings? You may have guests say, Oh yeah, I've, I've been listening to your podcast or uh, I decided to take this meeting with you because I've been following your content. That content could have been the podcast. It could have been content generated from the podcast. Measure that. Measure networking opportunities. Measure the number of leads of leads and sales generated from the podcast. So now, how do you measure these things? Again, it's about where this data is going to live. Tracking links. You can have tracking links either mentioned in the podcast, in content from the podcast that link back to your website and your landing pages. Uh, unique promo codes you may distribute, you may mention on your podcast, go to our company.com slash podcast name or slash offer. Those may be things you only mention on your podcast, which in turn show up on your analytics and let you know that this lead, this particular person, this download came because of the podcast. Also, you can survey your customers during interactions to identify how many leads or sales were influenced by the podcast as well. We once had a customer who we had a cold call with them. Um, we didn't know that we made a good connection with them, but then six months later, they said, we've been listening to your podcast all this time. In other words, they've been influenced by us for six months. Then they called, they contacted us back. We had a longer conversation. They became a customer, but it took that, six months of them being nurtured through a podcast. And we knew because they mentioned it, that the podcast had been very effective at driving that lead into uh, being a customer. So we tracked the relationship uh, that arose from the podcast directly. Now, where's the data? It isn't in Apple data. It isn't in your podcast host information. That data is going to reside in your CRM systems and Google Analytics, because you've made tracking available for your mentions and for your content, it'll be your market automation platforms. That's where your tracking links may be tracked. It may be where your content and your customer uh, history is being tracked. That's where the data is. Now, you have to put things in place, links, tracking codes, all those things in place. Once that plumbing's in place, you'll begin to see the results of your podcast through either the podcast itself or the content you created from the podcast. All that information is available for you, as well as direct communication with prospects and customers. As I said before, you do want to ask, have you listened to our podcast or how did you learn about us? You may want to put on your form, you know, what was the last piece of content you received from us or was influenced by from us? So measurement is important. Now you may be thinking, okay, now we know how to create a pod. We know about a podcast. We know what we can do with the content from the podcast. We know how to drive website traffic. We know how to create more content. We even know how to drive some pipeline with the podcast. The next thing is how do I create a podcast? Well, that's where we can give you some information on what to ask. If you're looking to outsource a podcast, there are some specific questions you want to ask before you find a podcast production partner. And those questions are, do they provide additional marketing expertise? Now, this is where there's a definite line drawn between podcast editors and podcast producers and perhaps an agency that understands marketing because podcasting is content marketing. It is the long game. So just producing a podcast won't get you the results that you'll get if you're working with someone who understands the marketing portion of why you're producing a podcast, what kind of content you need to output from the podcast, that part comes in with the cons consultation you get from a marketing, uh, an agency who understands marketing. Also, are they familiar with the business your size? Some podcast companies, agencies, or editors are only familiar with working with personal brands or fan or entertainment podcasts. But it is a, it is a big difference when you have to understand how a big organization or a big company moves. In other words, 
Do you understand? Do they understand compliance? Do they understand uh, how important it is to do editing a specific way? Do they understand the importance of your brand? There's a lot of things that come along with working with a large organization or a large business that you want to make sure that if you are a larger business or if you have very specific brand rules or specific marketing goals, that you understand that the agency has experience with a business your size. Also, do they assist with recording? Many podcast editors say, send us your audio and we'll edit it. Well, there's a few problems with that. First of all, you may need help making sure that your recording is done correctly, either in the right order, in terms of the phrasing, in terms of retakes, in terms of quality. Having someone with you to help you with a recording makes a world of difference on the end product because garbage in is garbage out. If you have a garbage recording and you're recording like on Zoom or something, there's nothing that editing can do to make it reach a certain professional level that you may be looking for. So does the agency help you with a recording? If you need some voiceover assistance, can they help that? Do they have a staff of voiceover people? Can they write content for your social or repurpose your content? And then also the big thing on the very back end of that is in addition to promotion, promotion, can they actually host your content and give you advice on distributing your content? Because a podcast is no good if it's not hosted somewhere, if it's not distributed, and the whole marketing piece isn't understood. So that's very important. Let me, before I end up here, check to make sure we don't have any questions here. And then we're going to wrap up. So if we're not connected on LinkedIn, hopefully we are. Hopefully that's the reason how or why you got to this episode. Um, if not, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Visit contentmonster.com. Uh, there's also another deck that's called Business Podcasting is Different. So if you can grab that QR code on your phone, uh, we can also put a link maybe if we have a hand on if we do or not. But that particular link will also send you to a slide deck similar to this one, but it goes into how business podcasting is different from other types of podcasting. 